think so. Just trying to check it. Check, check. Is anybody out there? Are we live? You can tell if we are actually up and running. Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Okay. see that awesome welcome all right so uh, I guess we just begin huh? Uh, thanks for tuning in I uh, I'm a uh, I want to welcome everybody to uh, this mixed media portion of creative vets uh, and uh, my name is Wayne Berzinka and I'm going to take you through a very simple um, project that hopefully even if your kids are home or you have children uh, could do it as well but um, a little bit about uh, me uh, first before we begin uh, I'm grateful to uh, have worked on several projects that have appeared on book covers album, album covers uh, Johnny Cash George Strait uh, you know editorial illustrations for the Washington Post all of that good stuff um, and so I'm really grateful to be here and use my gift to lead you all through um, a project. And I'm a bit nervous, but that's all right. We're going to roll with it. So um, the materials, many of you at home, if you're watching live, may not have had chance to um, uh, collect these items, which is okay. It will be archived on YouTube. You can perhaps practice this later but I'm gonna walk you through my materials that I use to create mixed media um, and I uh, see another person pop up hello to you uh, and uh, Domingo Rodriguez um, the materials that I've used in the past yes paste uh, is a acid-free uh, paste that uh, it's kind of like uh, sticky dried honey if you look at it and you just add a lot of water to it I don't know if you all can see that, uh, but it's very tacky, and then when you add water, it adheres. Uh, you can get this at any hobby store. Uh, that's what I used to use. Um, today, I use Golden Brand adhesives, which are top-of-the-line um, archival glues. Uh, it's probably the number one artist uh, product maker. But it, this looks like a, uh, a yogurt paste that is uh, the consistency of, of a thick yogurt, and it's an adhesive glue. You can get them in different consistencies. Or consistent. Uh, there's a fluid mat medium as well, which is like a, a liquid version of, of the same thing, um, which is good for gluing rope and things that uh, are harder to adhere to, to the surface. Um, what else have we got? Acrylic paints. Are, I use Liquitex brand as well as Golden brand. Um, and again, you can buy these at any, uh, so you can see that there, any hobby store online, Amazon. Um, different uh, stores provide those. But again, they're, they're thicker, you know, versions of, of acrylic uh, that I just uh, mix on my palette. Um, exacto blades are also important along with a metal ruler. Uh, metal rulers to me work much better than a wooden ruler because your, your blade will get caught on the edge of the, uh, of the wood sometimes. So I, I suggest a, a metal ruler if you're going to proceed uh, exploring this um, medium further. Um, I also keep on my studio bench clips, just the uh, office basic office clips. Uh, I see a lot more people showing up. Hey, Dan, uh, South Carolina, and uh, Karen Lynn, hello to you. Um, these clips, 
are great for drying pieces that, uh, for instance, if I were to glue this metal uh, button down uh, and I want it to stay in place, I would uh, actually use these clips to kind of hold it, you know, hold it in place. So again, just uh, my tricks of the trade on my studio bench here. Uh, a pair of scissors is always good. And if you're at home, you've got scissors more than likely in, in that kitchen drawer that has a bunch of other things that you don't really need that much, but then can never find. Um, what else? Uh, paint brushes. Again, you can get these at Walmart. Um, you can get these online at Amazon right now. I don't know if there's many craft stores open uh, with our current situation, but, uh, but pencil is always important too for sketching um, to have that nearby. Um, so hopefully we can add on the website Creative Vets, uh, you know, there actually is a list, uh, a supply list, I think, already that uh, we can direct you to um, if you want to explore this further. So I like to work with a lot of old found um, objects, old books. This one's being teenagers. Um, you can find these in thrift stores, you know, um, junk stores, which is another hobby that I enjoy is to just to go take a walk through and look at history in front of you as you're walking through these um, these stores. Uh, maps, old maps, I mentioned this before, but um, if you can find a, um, these are vintage maps from, a, from an old book, which I think are really cool. That light's shining on that, you can't see that, but I love the color in these and, and the uh, vintage look that they have, so they can uh, add to how you might tell your story through your mixed media piece. Photographs, um, all kinds of fun stuff. Rope, uh, Farm rope, if you remember, if you grew up on a farm, it's the kind of rope that uh, you'd find in the barn, uh, I find works really well for uh, making hair. And uh, hey, Dan, uh, actually, I said hey to you earlier. You popped up again. Uh, who else have we got? Um, uh, several of you are up, up here. Um, hello to all of you tuning in. But uh, farm rope is uh, great for creating hair and you can see I think if I move my head you can see behind me there's a portrait of me as a child and, and um, the hair that uh, was created using this farm rope that is soaked in water which causes the ravel to straighten out and become real fine uh, almost like actual hair which I think is really cool uh, it's a good tool to use if you're trying to mimic that um, so, uh, what else do we got here? Uh, if you have any questions on the materials, let me know. Uh, and I'm just going to keep moving forward and take you through a, a simple project here. Uh, the methods of collage, when you create using this medium, um, again, paper, cardboard, glue, paint, um, found objects, metal, you know, patches, there's clothing. Uh, that you can cut up uh, to use pieces of, of small clothing. There's my scissors. Anything goes. So if you're in your home and you are uh, a vet, even if you're not a vet, uh, you can find these things that you may not need anymore or you might want to use in your art piece and uh, collect them to begin using in your, in your artwork. Uh, here's some other cloth that you can see here. Um, so open your mind. Uh, I think Romir Verden, he's a, he's a mixed media artist. If you don't know his work, uh, I would encourage you to look him up. But he says the artist is something of a whale, um, always searching and looking for exactly what he needs. So if you can get your mindset in um, and your eyes open to search and think about what you might use. Uh, I mean, there's no telling what you could come up with and what you might create. And I'm excited to see uh, your end result pieces. But so, uh, again, when, when you're using the glue that I mentioned earlier, the Golden Brand, if you don't have Golden Brand, maybe you have Mod Podge around your house, which is a very simple introductory glue. Uh, it's liquidy. Um, you might consider using that. You can get it at Walmart or even probably Dollar General, maybe. Um, uh, if I'm going to glue for, I'll walk you through a couple of introductory uh, um, methods here. 
you can cut your cloth, you can rip your cloth. Um, you can't, actually, I can't even rip it. What am I saying? Uh, so you can rip it. If you want to create, for instance, a cloud, uh, you can crumble your cloth up, use the glue. Glue and water are your friend. Uh, you can never use enough glue. This might freak some of you out because you're like, oh man, it's all white. But it's really not going to dry that way. It'll dry clear. You won't even see that stuff. But think about how you might create textures with your found objects. If you want to, for instance, glue this um, piece of cloth down. Again, glue and water are your friend. Cover both sides of the cloth as I'm doing here. Um, and I'm just working right now as a, as a sample on a piece of uh, cardboard. But um, make sure that there's enough glue and water to adhere that to the cardboard. If you want to do the same thing with paper, like this map, you can rip your paper. Um, you can crumble it up to use to form you know, different textures like this. If you want to take a, uh, for instance, a photograph, this is an interesting technique that, that you might consider. Um, so if you cut your photograph into strips like this, you can actually reassemble the image kind of disjointed or a little off, if that makes sense, so that it creates more interest. For instance, you uh, take your strips now and you kind of reassemble them back. It's all about um, construction and deconstruction. So many people say they're afraid they might make a mistake if they glue something down, they may not like it, but it's all about construction and deconstruction. So if you don't like something that you have put down, you can rip it up, uh, paint over it, um, put another piece on top of it. Um, there are no mistakes, uh, as I like to say. Um, so again, if you're going to glue this uh, photograph back together, again, this is a sample uh, to show you some different techniques. Um, again, just uh, apply the glue generously on both surfaces and make sure you get good and messy because that's always fun. This is kind of how, oh, you look at that type on the back. You see that text? That's kind of cool. So the happy accidents happen when you find things unexpectedly. And maybe that glues that way. It creates a bit more interest. Um, when I first started doing this type of work, uh, I, I created very simple uh, paper um, collages that had a lot of these techniques I'm sharing with you now. So if you can see that. It's a bunch of little strips of interesting paper. It's got um, paper bags and paper bags with writing on them and old book covers. There's a sewing pattern, I think, if you all can see that. Um, D. Bridgman says hello. Hey there. Um, glad you're tuning in. Uh, ski trail maps. Somebody else said they just found some ski trail maps. Uh, so it looks like you all are, are getting into this, which I'm really grateful for. But hopefully this will... will uh, encourages an abstract a small uh, piece that you could do at home as well um, and these are a couple other samples I did several years ago found objects found um, photographs out of life magazines as an image of a woman with a flower and then you know there's a basic frame with some handwriting which I think is really interesting to me um, and another uh, abstract collage here using found images so the opportunities and the uh, ideas are endless if you really open your mind to this form of art. And you can tell a story. You can tell your story. You can tell uh, the story of somebody in your family or a friend of yours uh, through this type of medium. And the beautiful part about it to me is that um, the objects um, enhance that story that much more by not only um, engaging you further, uh, but they're personal uh, pieces from your own collection or your own life or your family's life um, that could be interesting. So um, what else have we got here? 
There's some, uh, this looks like an old 101st Airborne uh, medallion. I don't know if y'all can see that uh, down here or if I hold it up here. Uh, but I like this cord. So, you know, rope or, or um, any, you know, small pieces of thread, uh, again, uh, yarn, um, anything interesting that you might have around your house. Most of my work, uh, do we have a mobile camera I can walk them through uh, one of my pieces, like where I can lift the camera? No, you have a free piece of that camera beside you. Yeah, so let's see, let's bring uh, the, yeah, that little dude there. We can just adjust Show. this camera. Huh? Oh, yeah, I forget yeah. about this one. This one's better. Okay, so this I wanted to share with you all is a... Uh, portrait of Adele Gonzalez that was commissioned uh, several years ago. Um, and what I like about it is, and this actually hangs in my wife's um, office. She's a, a therapist uh, and a counselor for drug and alcoholic recovering folks. Um, and what I love about it is it, it is the face that is split in two. And Adele, when he was 18, was um, arrested and put in prison for uh, a wrongly convicted uh, crime. And so on the, on the uh, left uh, of the piece is him when he was 18, and on the right is him at 39 when he got out of prison. So there was a group of lawyers that got together and said, this is wrong, uh, you don't need to be serving this time. And so they uh, collectively came together and got him out of prison. But it also tells a story about how you might think about your own um, project that we're going to walk through and telling your story within a a template of a face which will be uh, this very simple um, outline that we're going to build actually I'm going to build the collage on this outline uh, as I walk you through this uh, method of, of art so uh, but I wanted to show you this uh, this piece here in particular and there's a lot of depth to it, and you can see over the t over the years, I've somehow my work has gotten more 3D, um, and that is um, created using foam board. Uh, that uh, is many of you you know have seen it in your packaging of boxes and things, but it's just a quarter inch to an eighth inch thick foam board that I've built up uh, my portraits on to give it that much more depth and interest. Um, so uh, that's one example. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, all right, so let's start. Uh, what do we got here? What's the oddest thing you've used in one of your collages? Dan says the oddest thing. You know, um, the <laughs> it's not odd. It was actually uh, difficult for me to cut. But I did a portrait of Johnny Cash uh, about three years ago. And most of the items in the portrait were Johnny's personal items from this particular um, client of mine who, who collects his, his uh, memorabilia. And he brought one of Johnny's coats to me. And he said, I want you to put this in the collage. And I freaked out. And I said, I'm not cutting that coat. It's a black coat that Johnny Cash would wear. And he said, no, you're going to put this in, in this piece. And, and it took me the longest time to actually put his scissors to that coat and cut it up. Uh, but uh, that was difficult, uh, but meaningful uh, nonetheless. And he wore and had several black coats, but, but that's probably one of the uh, most interesting items I've had to use or cut up in, in my collages. Um, Streamlabs, let's see, who else have we got here? Um, but anyway, hopefully that helps, Dan, answer your question. All right, so let's uh, walk you through... Um, by, I'm going to build, actually build this image of this face up using the items that we've talked about. These templates are on the Creative Vets website, I believe, that you can download. Um, there's different options of this particular uh, template. So if you're worried that, you know, I don't know how to draw, even if you uh, have a difficult time drawing, um, to start today, if you're wanting to work along with me, um, take a pencil and one of two things. Um, if you have a mirror and you're not intimidated to attempt to draw yourself, 
uh, oops, I had a mirror here, but anyway, just hold the mirror up to yourself and try to draw the basic shape of your head. Keep it very simple, um, you know, where your ears might be, uh, and maybe just the, the neck and part of the shoulders. Um, again, this is an inter introductory project, so uh, I'm not really concerned about the technical aspect of your drawing skills, but what I am interested in is, uh, oh, look at there. There I am, that beautiful face. Uh, what I'm interested in is what happens for you while you're working. So uh, again, don't be concerned about, I'm not an artist, I, I have never created, um, that doesn't really matter. What, what, what's important to me is that you're uh, attempting to use the materials and uh, try something new. Um, and as you're engaging the process, just as a young child, if you were, um, most children created, colored, danced, sang, played before they could do anything else. So I want, if I can get you back to that basic um, time of creating, that's what I'm interested in. So again, if you don't have time to download the template, draw a basic simple face here, and we'll use that um, to, uh, to create. So what I'm going to do to start uh, this particular piece is work on the background around the outside of the head. This light is kind of, I don't know if that helps you see better. There's some weird light going on there, but um, can you all see that? There we go. That's better. Um, so I want to create around the outer side. I want to create some textures and different backgrounds around the outside of this head to begin with uh, here. And uh, another form uh, for object that you might consider using is tissue paper. And I brought some, and I don't remember where I put it. Uh, hang on one second. Let me go back. So the cool thing about this is you can actually paint with paper and uh, rip it and begin assembling it around the background of the piece. Again, lots of glue here and uh, just begin assembling this. It's really cool. You put the glue on this tissue paper and it just sucks right to the background of your, of your board. And what, what this template is on is I've adhered it to an artboard. And these artboards you can get at Amazon, you can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby once they open again, Michaels, wherever. But um, it allows you to s some more uh, durability to create on. Um, and again, just begin building using texture. If it wrinkles, that's okay. You can see that. Some, sometimes it doesn't apply very clearly. Um, I came in a little late, John says. What kind of golden glue did you mention? So it's golden brand adhesives, John, and uh, you can get those. Can you see that? There we go. That's better. You can get these online at the Golden Brand website, and uh, also um, I purchased mine at uh, Jerry's Artorama here in Nashville. If you're not in Nashville, Jerry's Artorama has a few stores around the country. Um, and uh, it's a top of the line adhesive that is archival, and when it dries, it does not yellow. Um, Golden also has a fluid uh, matte medium that is uh, more of a liquid version of what I just showed you. Uh, it, it's good for applying like rope and different items. Uh, so, so check out, there's tons of products. And if you have something you're trying to create, uh, the cool part about Golden is they have a, um, an 800 number with people that are at the phones every day that if you explain to them what you're trying to achieve, they will actually mix up a custom made um, adhesive or for, for instance, I was trying to do water dripping off of a, um, a rock or something and I wanted the adhesive to kind of dry that way and I couldn't get it to work with the glue that I had so I called Golden and they came up with this um, custom-made mix that they mailed me 
and I ended up using that by pouring it, pouring it uh, over the rock. It was really cool. Um, I'm glad you all are tuning in. I see I see more comments uh, popping up here. So um, back to the building of this piece here. Uh, again, keep adding, and you can mix up your colors. Paint. We've not talked about paint yet, which first I'm going to do this. So I'm going to rip part of my map up and use part of it in the background. And we'll show you. These vintage maps are so freaking cool. I love these. Um, you just put some glue on here and on the actual surface of the paper. And adhere that baby down enough room on my workspace here. We are actually working, this setup is in a um, thrift store. <laughs> so there's a lot of old pieces of clothing and couches and uh, found you know, shoes and things like that, uh, which is actually pretty cool, but um, that's where we're filming today. Um, so glue that thing down. Uh, and the paint, so what I wanna talk about is how uh, can utilize the acrylics. Um, if you want to mix these, uh, I just squirted a few different uh, colors down. You, you know, uh, you can experiment with uh, mixing your colors. Um, but so if you've glued a piece of paper down with some text, uh, you can actually um, take your brush. That's not a very attractive looking color there. Uh, where you're able to still see in the background the text of the paper, but you're actually tinting it with this paint, which is a really interesting effect. Um, can you all see that? So I can actually wipe some of that off as well, where you're, you'll still be able to read, see that? Read some of the text, but it has a, a tint to it now. Which I think that's a cool effect. So I do that a lot in my work. I'll, I'll put it here, some paper down with interesting text um, and uh, make sure that you can still read the text, but it's tinted with, with a color. And uh, what else have we got? I'm going to keep adding these different pieces of paper here. Let's see, again, applying the glue to the background, and if you're out there and you're listening, tell me where you're from, like where, where uh, you are tuning in from, what state. I'd love to hear from you. All right, here's another piece on that side. So another example I can show you, this is, this is another art board uh, that I put a wire on it, you can see here. Um, and what I've done with the tinting using various pieces of paper with writing, and there's an American flag on there, which I think is really cool here. Um, and what I did is I tinted the entire dried piece as a, as a return check here uh, and I took a coat of cream paint and lightly tinted the entire thing so that you've got this really cool background now that you can put something else on top of in the center so this could be your your background uh, if that makes sense so uh, let's see keep moving on this piece got another book here. It's a first aid book that I thought was interesting if, if you're a vet and you're tuning in. Uh, objects, again, that pertain to uh, your story. Uh, things that uh, you might find or have that you could um, 
broadly tell your story in an abstract way, perhaps, or or in a portrait like I'm doing here. But um, these are images of illustrated color plates of of, um, of the body. It looks like um, the vessels and the circulatory system, which I think is interesting. Um, so these add a bit more interest when you start adding color, more color. I can't even find my scissors here. Uh, like this. Words are important in my work as well. If you're trying to communicate something to somebody and uh, you, uh, you don't want to use your voice, you can use the art, you can use words in your art to communicate the feeling that you have or what you've experienced that people may or may not be able to understand. Uh, Chicago, Charleston, Fort Worth, Kokomo, hey, John, Domingo, and Fin Fan, and uh, Man Glaze Black, it looks like. I don't have my glasses, so forgive me. I can't read real well. But welcome. Glad you're tuning in. And... Uh, Hopefully you'll find this interesting and helpful, what we're walking it through today. I really uh, love what Creative Vets is doing and how they're helping so many folks um, recover from their personal trauma or PTSD. And um, art is a wonderful uh, tool uh, to engage people uh, and help open them up. So I'm grateful to be here with you today. Uh, so again, any found paper, uh, there's a patch here, 101st Airborne patch uh, somebody had given me. Uh, you know, if you've got these lying around your house, uh, perhaps you create a piece of art that tells your story. Um, and uh, you, you can engage uh, a, lot other, a lot more people with, with your finished piece of art, you know, by them seeing it in the end so uh, not sure where this goes sometimes I try to work uh, subconsciously and not overthink my work uh, there are times in my studio when I can become so um, uptight and want something to come together so uh, desperately that uh, nothing seems to work uh, because I'm trying too hard so if I can encourage you to relax and to um, just kind of go with the flow. Um, if you find an interesting scrap lying on the floor next to your piece that you're working on that you, you pick up and you're like, man, that looks cool, just glue it down. Um, subconsciously, if you kind of can get in touch with the rhythm of working and using the tools and enjoying the process, your art is going to be that much more interesting. If you overthink the process and you um, find yourself becoming stuck uh, there's a few tricks you can get up from your work, walk, you know, get a cup of coffee or walk outside for a minute, come back to it, and you'll see the piece in a completely different way than you had before when you were stuck. Um, and uh, so that's what I've learned. And every day, I mean, I've been doing this 20 years. I get frustrated. I get pissed off and angry. And um, other times it comes together so quickly and easily. Um, and uh, what I enjoy uh, is people engaging the work after it's finished um, and seeing how they might respond to it and what they take from it. Sometimes people look at the finished work and they go, man, look at that, I see such and such in that you know, portrait and, and I could never have dreamt that. You know, What they see is something that I never really imagined they might take away from it. So that's the beauty of art too, is everybody's gonna interpret it differently, they're gonna see it differently and uh, I think that's really a powerful thing. So, actually, sparks. Oh, we got some sparks. I don't know what that is, but hey, yay for you. <laughs> uh, this is cool. I wanted to show you guys this. So, uh, this is another example of what you can uh, do with rope and paint and cloth. This is a lion. It's kind of 3D. It's got foam board on the back. He's cut out of cardboard. Um, this is for a project that I'm working on currently, and uh, but I thought that was really cool. So if you look closely at his face, you can see text from newspaper in there. 
uh, rope. When you begin to cut the rope apart and assemble it for the main of the line, I mean, it's really cool. The opportunities are endless, how you can tell a story through objects and, you know, mixed media. So that's one example. Here's another example of a crow head. Uh, I'll do it this way this time here. Uh, if you can see that, somebody's calling me. My phone's ringing. I'm not going to answer it, but um, I'll do it this way. You can see it better. So again, it's on foam board, uh, a couple of different uh, thicknesses of foam board to kind of, once it's adhered to the background, it will create um, an interesting, like this, it will create an interesting shadow and some depth. So I'll actually glue it to a board like this. And so when the, the light hits it the right way, you can see this shadow from the beak and from, you know, the outline of, of the crow's head. But for uh, for the crow, I used cloth to create uh, some of the texture of the feathers. And then I ripped the cloth, which, which when you do that, it's kind of blurry there. Maybe it'll come back in focus. Something's going on with the camera here. Um, here we go. Let's try this. When I rip the cloth, it creates these tiny threads that look kind of like feathers, which I think is interesting. Um, so. Again, opportunities are endless. Back to uh, Spokane, Washington. Hey, Seth, thanks for tuning in. Um, back to, uh, don't forget about your brushes. If you're using glue, sometimes uh, the brushes get uh, unwashed and they dry and they're a big mess. So just uh, FYI, if you're going to try this, this medium. Make sure you clean out your tools when you're not using them. Um, cardboard. So the things that I just showed you, the crow head and the line, my kids eat a lot of cereal, and this is another tool around your house right now if you're watching. Go in your pantry, uh, take the bag of cereal out, uh, and put it back in the pantry, and then just cut up the cereal box, which is a great uh, tool and um, inexpensive way to build mixed media art. Um, and you can do one of two things. You can create on the actual box, um, which is the same as, you know, kind of similar to this wood or this um, cardboard template that I'm using, this, <clears throat> excuse me, panel. So if you're at home right now and this is all you've got, go for it. Glue on this, paint on it. Um, create on the back of a cereal box. It's a wonderful, um, inexpensive tool to use uh, for beginners and even for advanced uh, folks in this type of medium. Here's another collage I wanted to share with you. This was a early piece that I did years ago for an album cover. It's uh, a crow and a dove. I'm big on symbolism and, uh, you know, evil and good, perhaps, however you might interpret that. But um, let me do this side here. You can see that better. So they're cut out of paper, the feathers, and, and uh, a couple of different colors of paper for the beak on the, on the dove. And then newsprint, if you flip through a newspaper or even magazines where, where there's a lot of black ink, I think that's how I created these crow's wings and um, cut the feet out. And then it's glued to a, uh, a paper bag uh, on a, mounted on, you can see back here. So it's a paper bag that's been mounted to a, a board for more durability but uh, so simple uh, basic collage piece that uh, is not too advanced but uh, trying to open your minds up to, to think about things other than a portrait um, whatever you find interest in um, the opportunities are endless I'd love to see your pieces um, did, Wayne how did you get involved with Creative Vet so I met Richard gosh two years ago where did we we met at, an, at uh, Creative Vet's art show uh, up in no it was in uh, Hendersonville at the um, okay. cultural center at the uh, what was the name of that show do you remember yeah Mount Haven Ar Arts and Cultural Center in Hendersonville Tennessee there was a, a vets uh, creative vets art show and so I took my son Andrew uh, and I was interested to see uh, and was blown away by the work that was there and um, just blew my mind. So I talked to Richard and I said, hey, I'm an artist. I'd love to connect with you. And so uh, last year I worked with the vets here in Nashville. 
uh, and uh, it was a beautiful experience for me and I think for them. And uh, so here we are again, you know, uh, teaching, leading you through uh, through this exercise. But let's see what else. Uh, Seth says, uh, Spokane, Washington. I'm sure you'll find plenty of items during my upcoming spring cleaning, somebody says. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but uh, they're over there uh, reading as I'm uh, talking to you here. But uh, So um, paint, you know, paint I think is, is enjoyable. It's easy. It's fun, but it can also be a good way to cheat in mixed media. But just to kind of show you, that's also another option to uh, add to your paper and found objects and uh, this might come this I like watches of color so maybe there's a yellow over here too um, to see how it comes together it looks kind of cool I feel like Bob Ross was his name Bob Ross Bob Moss what's his name talking here but uh without the hair, I'm a bald Bob Ross. Um, but I'm glad to be with you nonetheless. All right, so that's kind of cool. I like that yellow. Um, what else? Let's add some hair to this dude uh, using the rope that I mentioned earlier. So <clears throat> for those of you that may have tuned in late, um, what I like to use for hair in my portraits is good old farm rope. And uh, the kind that you'd find in, in your grandparents' barn or up in the hayloft, whatever. And so what I've learned is that if I soak this in water, like just in a bucket of water in my studio, that after it's unwound, you see that curly kind of weird shape? Um, when you sh soak it in the water overnight or even just for an hour or so, it becomes very fine and uh, almost hair-like. And so I like to use this. Um, you know, you kind of defray this even more. You can see that. Isn't that cool? Looks like real hair to me. But um, And there's different things you can use for hair. You can paint it in. You can create textured hair. But um, I like to use this. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour uh, a bunch of this glue on top of this head here like this and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to begin uh, cutting this in very fine uh, portions and then uh, this will symbolize hair can y'all see that I think that's interesting it's also fun to cut up I think but if you're angry you can just take cut the crap out of this <laughs> uh, it's good therapy um, but as you cut it uh, and then you begin to move around with your hands whatever um, and uh, I'll add some more glue and, and again if you tuned in late this glue is it's pretty milky in substance and it might freak some of you out if you've never used it it's going to dry clear you won't even see the consistency of, of the glue is going to be um, clear in the end and sometimes I'll even just pour pour the glue over the top of it and then take my brush again like this and work it in and that's going to dry beautifully um, you can paint over that or leave it like this Some, some of you may go, man, I messed it up, but there really is no messing it up. You can, if you don't like the way that looks, um, you know, there's options. You can, you can cut the same shape of the head and cover it up, you know. Uh, actually, that's kind of cool, actually. I'm going to take a piece of that and uh, do this number. How are we on time? We got. Yeah, if you can go as long as you want. Oh, uh, we're not. Yeah, I'll just. Uh, yeah, definitely another 
Well, no, we won't go that long. But um, I did bring some uh, some other. Um, a good thing to work for skin tone to use for skin tones is uh, sewing patterns, and as you layer them, they become darker or lighter. Uh, you can paint over them. Uh, I'm not sure where I put those, but um, if you're in your home and, and your wife or your partner sews, whatever. Um, grab some of those patterns, or you can get them in thrift stores too. If you just walk around, um, you'll find all kinds of interesting stuff where they keep the books. Look at that, that's kind of interesting. So when I'm doing portraits in my studio, um, if you look at the human face, um, you can follow the contour of, of the, the bone structure of the face. And I like to do that by ripping and, and forming the paper in terms of the bone structure. So, so think about a person's chin or their cheekbone or whatever. Can you see that, how it kind of like um, might suggest starting with the cheek and following down, you know, towards, towards the chin? Um, and again, for the other side. So you're building up, you're building up layers. Uh, and you're, if you're, uh, really getting into this project and you're unsure at some point like you've got a lot of stuff lying unglued or unadhered to the piece your cell phone's a great tool to use to kind of stand back take a picture of where your pieces are um, for instance these uh, three pieces of paper that i just laid down uh, bob ross is the man yes he is <laughs> uh, but your cell phone is a great tool uh, and then you can move stuff around, look at the photo you just took and go, man, I like that, it looks good. Or you can, you know, move things around and then decide that you want to glue them where you've put them. So um, in this particular case, the way this is coming together, the maps are, uh, looks like where, where my subconscious is going. It's what the paper's next to me, but I also like the way it's looking. Um, and, uh, so your map could tell a story of where you served or where you live or where you grew up. Um, there is all kinds of meaning in the pieces that you use. And uh, that's the beauty of this mixed media form. See that? Oh, there it is. Seth is, Seth is tuning in. Big time there. Hey, Seth. Know you know he, Seth? Yep, he went through our USC program. Oh, hey, USC Seth. Uh, I say he said he's getting his kids to get some stuff around the house, oh, too. Oh, nice. Okay. LOL, he says. <laughs> uh, what else? Who else do we got here? Don't go, Wayne? What is he saying? I don't understand that. Where am I not going? Uh, maybe when you said Oh. Oh yeah, all yeah. Day. Okay, well, speaking of stream, I have to pee. Uh, <laughs> it's a different kind of stream. It is a different kind of stream. Uh, but as I turn beet red, so um, can I do that? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to sure. use the restroom. Don't go anywhere. I'll Keep. Step in. Yeah, here, Richard, come step in. You can work on this. <laughs> Let's talk to people. Yeah, talk to people. Uh, hey, people. Seth, where you at? Uh, <laughs> so this is nice. This is my debut. You notice the hair? It's been a long, it's been a long quarantine, guys. Uh oh. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to give me the camera. Thanks, man. Glaze black. I know who you are. Oh, even Creative S is crying. Thanks. Yeah, look more professional. We were uh, we were being filmed today, so look out uh, next week on Channel Five News in Nashville for what we're doing here. Oh, the backup quarterback. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I see what you think of me, Seth. You're in the basement. What are you doing in the basement? You're already isolated enough. Or is that your working space? 
Do you have a, uh, have you been continuing doing art since USC? I'm pretty sure you have, because we saw you at a, yeah, at Camp Southern Ground too. You're all about it. No, I'm not going to make any art. I refuse because it's just going to, all the value of everything is just going to go way up. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm the, um, wait, should I add something to this? It's already so good. Wait, Richard, how much of the art have you made that you want to make for yourself and not show anyone? Yeah, well, I haven't made any of this art yet. I've been behind the scenes trying to do all the, the admin stuff, but I typically actually only make art for myself. Um, it's one of those things, same with music. When I write songs, it's typically, unless I'm doing it for a very specific reason, for creative edits or something else, I have to like really feel empowered to write a song about something that I feel deeply about. But same with art, I uh, typically will only make art for myself. Even all that stuff that I did, um, that it's still sitting in the back of my the farm foundation and I'll like one day I'll clean that out and put it out but again it was all for me I was excited uh, to push that out and I haven't really done too much art since been getting too much in the weeds of the admin portion of creative events but I'll get back into it as we keep growing oh th yeah Seth that's awesome that's our big plan I mean just to have this up so that you guys stop being stir crazy, especially time away from your kids or just to have your kids be involved to kind of entertain them for a little bit. I know Garrett was planning on doing a all kids stream at one point. Oh, that <laughs> Garrett, that's a that's a very famous piece, the Two Face piece. I'll talk about that a different time. I'm uh, they called me the uh, the the what secondary quarterback, the backup quarterback. <laughs> what did Garrett do? Oh, what's that say? The that backup art is really empowered where I'm at today. Dude, that's awesome, Seth. Is he going to make any art? Who? Richard or me? Yeah, they're like, are you going to make any art? <laughs> you? I didn't want to ruin your piece. Oh, well, you could have. It needs help. I looked at it over there on the other screen, and I'm, man, we got to work on this thing. Uh, I'm back, and I did wash my hands. For those of you at home, wash your hands often. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take, I noticed when I was looking at the screen over there with Brett, so this red, uh, when I stood back and looked at it from over there, uh, I'm going to take and move some of this red over here to kind of bring the face out a little bit more. I don't know how it's going to work, but, so I'm trying to keep several things in mind when I'm working with you is to educate you and, and kind of guide you through what I'm doing. Uh, but also uh, try to make somewhat of a interesting uh, piece for you. Um, I don't know if this is working either, but I'm kind of struggling here. But uh, but the important thing is I'm walking you through materials and how you can uh, work with these different pieces. Uh, red is a really strong color and has a lot of symbol symbolism in it. So maybe this. Uh, See how as I draw that paintbrush over the paper with the text again, you can still you can still read what's under it under it, which I think is a an interesting. Uh, uh, but what this does, I think, is by pulling that red over, is uh, pull the face out more, so you can see uh, your eye goes right to, to the face, and that's what I noticed when I was looking there with Brett over there. But uh, let's see. Richard, how much of the art have you made? Did you only make for yourself and not to show anyone? Oh, I answered that question. You already did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. So even in this process that I'm doing with the brush, if... Um, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of kind of buzzword talk these days about being present, being in the moment. But I think there's a lot of um, truth and there's a lot of um, benefit from really mindfully paying attention to what your brush is doing, how it's moving back and forth, moving the color, what, what being in the moment of creating, whether it's songwriting, singing, um, visual art, if you're writing 
writing a song, writing poetry, whatever it is, um, to be mindfully present, um, which in, in a lot of ways is not easy to do. Um, I try to practice that every morning as I sit down and I read a poem or I journal sometimes to kind of, uh, if I'm feeling a little bit off or I feel funky, I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on with me. But I, if I put a pencil to paper and I just start subconsciously writing what comes out, I can more often than not pinpoint, you know, what, what is throwing me off, if that makes sense. But um, So art, back to art, I think, is you're moving the paint and the brush and, and um, creating the piece of art. Um, be mindful of what's happening for you. Uh, that's the beauty of what art can do um, for you. Um, so now let's move on to, let's see. Uh, this is interesting. This is an old checkered, more red, but I don't want more red. Let's see what I want. Um, how about we use some camel here? We'll cut these kids' camel pants off. It had two faces. Uh, sculpture you made. Oh yeah, he's asking you another question. Some about two-faced sculpture. Oh, you maybe got that answered already. Okay. Let's see. I wish you all could talk back to me with voices. This is, this is kind of throwing me off to kind of read your comments. But uh, does anybody else have any other questions as I'm uh, moving? Is there a mobile camera I can walk over to the larger? Not, not on this setup. Turn this one, and I'll just walk it up to it. To yeah, yeah, let's do that. Switch so, piece. So I want to walk. I want to show them this piece. These pieces behind me, yeah. actually. Um, let's do this. Wait, let's okay. Do so we're one. gonna we're gonna walk over here a little bit, or bring them yeah. to you. You can grab this side if you want. Yeah. So we can step over this. And then. So here's a portrait. Uh, speaking of storytelling, hold it back a little bit. Yep. Um, this was me when I was seven years old. And uh, you can tell there's not a lot of stuff in it, but as I began to think about it, I thought, you know, uh, as a seven-year-old, you haven't lived a lot of life. And so it made sense to me that there's not a lot of found objects in it. But <clears throat> what you do see, here's me on a bike. Uh, very faint image of me riding a bicycle here. Uh, there's a lot of pictures of me with my grandmother, whom I loved dearly, uh, right here. Uh, there's a lot of things in it uh, that have been... Uh, Hey, I see you. What does that mean? Oh yeah, those, those are more sparks that just came. more sparks. Okay. Uh, there's crayons in there. I loved crayons when I was a. Uh, Marines love eating crayons. <laughs> For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. Oh, is it, have you eaten them? Yeah, no, I haven't. I mean, be truthful. I haven't. <laughs> so, uh, an interesting story about crayons. And when I was a young kid. Um, and my grandmother that I just showed you uh, right here. Um, my grandmother had 20 children, so my dad is one of 20 uh, kids, 10 <laughs> brothers and 10 sisters. My dad's one of 11. I thought that was a lot. Yeah, and uh, so we would visit her home two miles down the road from my parents for Christmas Eve uh, every year. And one Christmas Eve, she grabbed me by the hand. I was, uh, I was seven or eight maybe, and she said, I, and she had 93 grandchildren. But she knew all of them by name. And so she took me by the hand and she walked me back towards the front porch. And she said, I have something for you. And she pulled out this. We can put this down. Um, or you, did you want to show anything else on there? You good? Yeah, well, I was just pointing out the crayons. The, yeah. the, I used a few crayons in here. but And again, you can see, I'll finish my story. Uh, but you see the hair, uh, which is this. Uh, there's two screens going on here. But you see that rope. Seth it's, asked me what my favorite color flavor was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's put that there. Red. Uh, I love red. Um, I'll finish my story here. Uh, it had two faces. Well, I don't know how the hell these things work. I'm reading the old comments. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says it's going from so bottom is the newest. Oh, that's why. Yep. See, I'm an old fart trying to get new tricks. Yeah, so like, as it. it goes down, the bottom will be the newest. Okay. And so these are from us just telling people to apply for our programs. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Like it keeps COVID away and all that stuff. So it's going down like that. Seth, you need to be able to show us your face. I want to see you. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, the camera. Oh. Back to the um, word. But my grandmother, so so she brought me back to the front porch, and she said, Brad. I have something for you. Whoops. What are you doing? I was showing Brett. And she, uh, she had a, a homemade tablet and a box of crayons um, that she uh, gave me as my Christmas gift. And, and so at that moment, she saw me. She saw that I was creative as a seven or eight-year-old, and, and um, that was her gift to me. But... Uh, so, uh, I don't know how much further. Does anybody else have any other questions? I mean, you can keep building and going on this with uh, the materials that I've explained already. And uh, if you do have any questions or want to reach out to me personally, uh, feel free to. Uh, you can find me online. Uh, and, and my website is first and last name waynebrzinka.com. Shoot me an email. I'd be glad to engage with you about. Uh, your project. If you've got questions, send me an email. Um, and uh, I'm sure that we'll be doing this again, maybe a more advanced project uh, down the For road. Sure. And, um, or, yeah, also, just if anybody has any more questions about just stuff while they keep going. Yeah. So, just so what have we got? Keep the line open for a minute. Just yeah, we'll see. keep it open for a minute. Um, but I think that takes them through the basics, does it not? Oh yeah. Should I keep? Yeah. Actually, I mean, if you just want to, just work. Just work a little bit and yeah. just answer questions, and if not, then yeah, yeah, just to working. give some people time to take some tests for people. Yeah. Do I have to keep talking? Or? You don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah. We're tired of you anyway. Just Are you? Just kidding. Oh yeah, man. We're tired of you anyway. Time for me to go. Anybody else got any more questions out there, or is it just Seth that we've got uh, tuning in? I see another question. I just want to see if it's working. If there's, there's a bunch of people on. Okay. Yeah, it's in the chat. They're definitely on the watch, and we're just making sure the chat. Okay. Done. Do you hide things in your pieces that you don't talk about, but you feel good to get them off your chest? Sometimes. I mean, so that's a great question. Uh, awesome ketchup. <laughs> uh, for me. Um, you know, I have my own trauma and my own pain, and I think uh, several years ago I worked through my own story in an art piece, and um, it was a uh, abstract version of a nightmare that I had as a kid that uh, if you go on my website and look under, um, uh, you'll scroll down and you'll see uh, um, Prayed Upon Prey is the name of the work. Um, but you'll, if you engage the work further, you'll see it, it's, I had this reoccurring nightmare of being chased through the woods by men in wolf masks. And so what I did is I brought that piece, that, that image, that memory to life through art. And it became this very large installation piece um, that was five feet by four feet by 38 inches thick. And it has a forest and real trees and, and um, but uh, so there are things in there that are symbolic to my story. So yes, in answer to your question, I do um, sometimes maybe hide or tell my pieces of my story uh, in my art. Um, and it does, it's very therapeutic. In fact, during that piece, when I was making that piece, I cut my hand multiple times by accident with X-Acto blade because I was working with such energy and um, persistence that when I would flip pieces over to 
to trim, I accidentally would slice my hand. And so um, it was very therapeutic to, um, to make that particular piece of work. Um, so that was a great question. Thank you for that. Um, I love this idea of your 3D pieces. Would you be able to come back and do a class that focuses around that? Yes, absolutely. So I could walk you through a, a more in-depth version of this basic introduction. Um, and again, so I'm trying to talk with you, keep in mind who's out there listening and watching and explain the materials. And it's this is new for me to, um, to virtual teach uh, as opposed to being with you in person, which I hope we can do uh, soon. But um, but for now, this is this is the new normal. And uh, I'm grateful to be with you all and offer my gift to you. And hopefully it helps you um, in your journey as you move forward uh, in your life. And uh, let's see what we got here. How do you make things look 3D? The yellow one you just showed. So um, I have foam board that I purchase. Uh, various thicknesses can be purchased. Here you can see uh, there's two stacked on top of each other. Uh, but so these pieces of foam are glued to the back of what I shared earlier, this crow head. Uh, that's the front of it, cut out of a cereal box. And then there's some thick uh, pieces of um, foam board that are adhered to, to the back. So once that's adhered and glued to the canvas, it gives you that 3D depth. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Seth. Thanks for that. That was a good question. Um, yeah. Any other folks? Can you tell how many people are tuning in out there? How many are online? Uh, I think it's Matt. Um, Matt, and we're on four different platforms. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. Um, what else have we got? I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. So I can show you. I've, I've got another... Uh, print of a of a piece that I made. About 24 though. Okay. 24. So this uh, is a portrait of obviously Abraham Lincoln that uh, the real piece is five feet high. This is the print, but uh, the actual 3D version is five feet high by four feet wide. And in it I used um, tin type photographs. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with the old versions of, of photos uh, that were printed on tin. There's actual uh, Civil War era newspapers for the stripes and the flag. There's images of slaves in Lincoln's ear here you can see. Um, and there's a lot of texture in his face from book bindings and, and different things uh, that uh, create this work as well. But um, can you all see that in the little, I'll do it this way, this way maybe is. There we go. There we go. Uh, so that's another piece that I did several years ago, 2011, I believe. And this actually hung at the Forge Theater in Washington, D.C., where Lincoln was assassinated, which was really cool for me as an artist to have that piece hang there. But uh, again, to open your mind up to uh, how you might create. There's another piece I'll share with you. Uh, so in your portraits, you might think if you're interested in this portrait uh, process that I just took you through here, um, what other objects or pieces? This one I, I worked in some snakes around the neck. This is Tom York from Radiohead. Uh, I'm a big Tom York fan. Um, and he had a side project that he did with uh, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers called Adams for Peace. So I did this portrait of Tom and I worked in these snakes and called it Adam for Peace, kind of Adam and Eveish, uh, kind of stealing from biblical. Uh, can you all see that? snakes kind of wrapping around his neck here and but uh, so if you're doing a portrait you know maybe there's a part of your story or or some thing you want to communicate um, in addition to to your portrait that might help tell your story uh, further uh, so that's something to consider um, let's see any other questions I don't see any new ones does that work Okay. Well, thank you all for tuning in. I hope this was helpful to you and uh, hope to see you again soon. Did you also, you can ask him if like to request some stuff. I know he said 3D, but if there's anything else that you'd be willing to teach or if they have something that they want to 
they want you to teach. You can always ask that. Yeah, let's see what else. Somebody uh, used to listen to Radiohead when I was in between performing funerals in Arlington Cemetery as a Navy casket bearer. Wow. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, Radiohead is incredible. Uh, Tom has a really uh, fascinating story. I think he lost his partner to several years not too long ago who died from an illness, I believe. Um, but he uh, wrote some music around it, which is pretty moving. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. I can't read your... Daniel? Yeah, it looks like Daniel. Oh, yeah, it's like red. Yeah, yep. Appreciate that. Um, Mr. Two, 1214, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Chantel... Hello to you. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you all. I'm grateful to be with you. So thanks. Thank